There's no denying every day when you wake up, you know you have it, but I wasn't gonna let it rule all my life. At 30, I was told, you're probably not gonna make it to 50. At 40, when it came back, I didn't know if I'd make it to 41. Okay, seventh grade, if I could have your eyes up here, I wanna go over the learning target to make sure you understand what it is that we're doing today. Repeat after me, create, create. A, monochromatic. a monochromatic abstract painting, abstract painting. That, shows that shows movement. I pretty much acted like I didn't have cancer. I arranged my uh, chemotherapy appointments around my teaching schedules. I didn't want it to take over because it was already taking over the shape of my body, the looks of my head. Thank you. Thank you. So it looks really good. A lot of people, when they get a cancer diagnosis, they only have a few weeks left, they only have a few months left. Instead of counting down the days to the end of their life, uh, I decided a long time ago, the Friday that I found out, to start counting up. So the following Friday, instead of um, being mad and cursing it, the disease and the diagnosis, instead I decided I would celebrate. I made it my first week. I survived one week. On January 30th, I survived my 800th Friday. So I've had 800 Fridays. That is, what, 5,600 um, different opportunities to make a difference, to make someone smile, to encourage someone. In 1999, our family was going through our own crisis. It started in May when my mother was diagnosed with uterine cancer. She was 60, and although that, that's not really something you want to hear, it's something that wouldn't be too improbable. Three months later, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, and I was 31 years old. Then a few months later, my sister was also diagnosed with breast cancer. So all three of us, my mother, my sister, and I, all were diagnosed in the same 12 months. We all had chemotherapy in the same 12 months, and we were all bald <laughs> in the same 12 months. We had never had any prior history medically. So the doctor said we had a better chance of winning the lottery than all of us having cancer at the same time. And then 10 years later, in 2009, I was re-diagnosed with breast cancer once again, this time on the opposite side. My mom and I both have survived over 15 years now. Unfortunately, after two and a half years, many, many treatments, surgeries, chemotherapies, and radiations, my sister lost her battle in 2002. And she left behind a beautiful, beautiful girl who was four years old at the time. Raising my niece has been the most amazing experience in my life. The treatments I received for cancer has taken away my ability to have children. And my being able to be there and to do the homework with her or to get after her for not doing her chores and be the cheerleader on the side of the track when she's going across that finish line, there's nothing better. This is my favorite. It's my straight line design. It's symmetrical, monochromatic. I used a ruler. I chose red because I like bright colors and it's radial balance. It is truly the definition of its name, a burst of color. It's a beautiful color. It did really good. Now I'm 15 years and a few weeks cancer-free. My students were so supportive. I had several students shave their heads because I was going bald. And then every day when they knew I was going to chemo, somebody would start it, they'd start a note, they'd say good luck, and they passed around the class and everyone would sign it. And sorry, I take it with me. So it was there. My very last chemo on my very last day, I had a pink jacket and every kid signed that jacket. And I wore that jacket as my chemo jacket. It was like I took them with me, you know. <laughs> 